King James is a white homosexual that had sex with his mother, why should I believe in his translation of the Bible? This is one of the many quotes that are repeated time after time when King James is the topic of discussion. The question is where exactly these allegations descend from. An even better question would be. Is there any proof of these alleged acts that King James committed? What if there was actually an agenda behind tarnishing the character of King James? What if he was actually a man who stood for truth, and because of this, was vilified the same way most people who stand for truth usually are? Christ warned us about a time in which people would be reviled for his name's sake. Another one. First we will begin with a little background history of the man known as King James the Bionite. King James' full name was James Charles Stuart, born June 19 at Edinburgh Castle in Scotland. He was born to Mary Queen of Scots and Lord Darnley in 1566. His father was murdered a year later after his birth in 1567. This led to James being crowned the King of Scotland at only 13 months old. He was at this time crowned James VI of Scotland and at age 12 he assumed power over the throne. From the time of his youth, James was tutored in the languages of Greek, Latin, French, Italian, and Spanish. He was also a well-learned historian in his own right. It is also important to mention that he was learnt in arithmetic and cosmography, the study of maps, along with many other areas of learning. After ruling over Scotland for 36 years, James became the first ever king to rule over both England and Scotland when he became King of England in the year 1603. It was at his ascension to the throne of England that he became known as King James I. While in Scotland he was called King James the Vi. This was due to the fact that he ascended to each of these thrones at two different time periods. While there were already five Jameses to rule over Scotland prior to King James the Vi, James became the first to rule over England. He was the first king to sit on three different thrones at once, England, Scotland, and Ireland, and was responsible for uniting these three countries into what is called Great Britain. You would believe that an accomplishment as great as this would be taught in modern history. He was responsible for calling a decree for the translation of the Old and New Testament out of the original Hebrew and Greek tongues. This translation is known today as the King James Version 1611 Bible and is the most accurate translation of the Bible. Simply because it correlates almost exactly with the Hebrew and Greek scrolls in which the Old and New Testament was written. King James had nothing to do with the actual translation of the Bible as far as hands-on translating from one language to another. He instead hired 47 of the best scholars of his time who were skilled in Hebrew and Greek to translate the holy texts from one language to another. King James was a staunch opponent against the establishment known as the Roman Catholic Church, making quotes such as, Rome is the seat of the Antichrist. King James the Sixth and I, AP, and the Pope is Antichrist. Dot dot. King James the Sixth and I, meditation upon Revelation 20, 7 10, and last but not least, the scripture forbiddeth to worship the image of anything that God created. King James the Sixth and I, a premonition to almost mighty monarches. King James the Sixth and I, a premonition to almost mighty monarches. Here we have listed just a few of many of the quotes of King James in reference to what he thought of the Roman Catholic Church, then known as the Papist. In fact, James authored many books exposing and opposing everything from the Roman Catholic Church to the Rosicrucian order of witchcraft and sorcery that began to uprise while James was still on his throne. A collection of King James writings can be found in a hard-to-find book named, The Works of the Most High and Mighty Prince James. Now we can see why the Roman Catholic Church doesn't take any measures to protect the character of King James. We can now move on to some of the allegations that are used to defame King James. 
we will use only research to prove whether these allegations were either myth or truth, opposed to using our own feelings as a way to place a label on another human being. 1. King James was a white homosexual, this is probably the most prominent of all accusations against the character of King James. Yet, very little to no one has actually researched this accusation to find out if it was true or not. So the question is is this myth a truth? First and foremost, we would like to establish the fact that King James was not a Caucasian in any way shape or form. In fact, many of the rulers of Europe from about 193 AD to about the mid to late 16th century were people of color. This period is documented in modern history as the Dark Ages, in which the descendants of the Israelites ruled over Europe for over 1,000 years. This is why this time is tactically referred to as the Dark Ages. Modern historians try to evade this fact by stating that the Dark Ages was a period in Europe in which no history was recorded, neither were there any new achievements in and politically, culturally, or economically. You have to remember that this is these are the same institutions that claim that they can find proof of life as far as one billion years ago, yet they have a hard time figuring out something as simple as to who was in power during this 1000 year period of history. Many so-called scholars would like to refute this fact but can't. One of the reasons is that there can be found within the coats of arms and artwork of many European countries the images of black royalty. Here are a few examples. A portrait by Jan Mostar, a portrait of a nobleman guest of the Queen of Austria, early 1500s, coat of arms from Belgium, coat of arms from Freising. Here we have just a few examples of the proof of the presence of black nobility and royalty in Europe during what is called the Middle or Dark Ages. King James was one of the last kings of this era to reign over Europe. In fact, here is a picture of King James himself from a book titled King James VI and I and the Reunion of Christendom. As you can clearly see, King James was a man of color. So the idea of King James being a Caucasian can be counted as a myth. Now for the second half of the accusation concerning King James being a homosexual. Where and how did this understanding come from, and is there any substantial proof showing this to be true? The answer to this question goes back to the year 1650, 25 years after the death of King James. The author of this allegation is Sir Anthony Weldon, a 17th century courtier and politician who had a personal vendetta against James. In his book titled, The Court and Character of King James, Weldon paints a portrait in which James is portrayed as an unhygienic, lazy homosexual. The question is why did Sir Weldon wait for 25 years until after James's death? The author of this allegation is Sir Anthony Weldon, a 17th century courtier and politician who had a personal vendetta against James. In his book titled, The Court and Character of King James, Weldon paints a portrait in which James is portrayed as an unhygienic, lazy homosexual. The question is why did Sir Weldon wait for 25 years until after James's death when he could no longer defend himself to bring forth this slanderous information? Sir Anthony Weldon along with other authors of his time such as Francis Osborne, another guy who had a person problem with King James, are continually used by historians as reliable resources on the life of King James. Yet both of these authors were known for composing hostile information against the king for the personal reasons. People lose the common sense and look over the fact that King James had a wife in which they bore nine children together. Her name was Anne of Denmark. This was James's only wife and the married in the year of 1589. The idea of King James being a white homosexual can be officially dismissed as a myth. King James had sex with his mother, here is another widely used statement that has been used to slander the name of King James. Let's examine this statement to see if it holds any validity. Firstly, King James was raised by neither his mother nor father. His father, Lord Darnley, was mysteriously murdered while James was still an infant. This took place in the year 1566. His mother, Mary Queen of Scots, 
had to surrender her throne a year later in the year 1567 after being suspected of being involved in the murder of Jane's father. After this, she was married James Hepburn, the fourth Earl of Bothwell. Hepburn was thought by many to be behind the death of Mary's former husband Lord Darnley. After being temporarily arrested, Mary tried to regain the throne as the Queen of England. After unsuccessfully doing so, she fled to England seeking protection from her cousin Elizabeth I who was then Queen of England. After Mary was accused of trying to assume Elizabeth's throne, she was then imprisoned for 19 years until the year 1587 when she was then executed. If anyone can do basic math, they will notice that there is no possible way that King James had a chance to sleep with his mother, and why would a homo's actual sleep with the mother if they are a homosexual? King James born, 1565 father murder, 1566 mother dethroned and imprisoned temporarily, 1567 mother again arrested for 19 years, 1568 mother executed, 1587 King James was only two years old when his mother fled away and was eventually imprisoned. As we can see, another accusation against King James can be labeled as a myth. King James tampered with the Bible, last but not least, another allegation against King James is that he was responsible for tampering with the Bible. First and foremost, you have to understand that King James was only the sponsor of the 1611 translation and not the actual translator. Secondly, there was a spiritual reason behind why King James called for the translation of the Bible out of the Hebrew and Greek tongues. In fact, this translation was prophesied in the Bible itself, Isa 28, 11 for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. The scriptures state in Isaiah 28 that with a stammering lip and in another tongue, the Most High would speak to his people. At the time that Isaiah received this prophecy, the Most High's people were speaking Hebrew. So why would the Most High need to speak to his people in another language? The answer to this question can be found in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, Deu 28, 49 The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle fleth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle fleth. One of the curses that would befall the children of Israel for disobeying the Most High's law was that they would be taken into captivity by nation who is represented by the eagle. What nation is this referring to? Oba 1, 1 the vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom, We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen, Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Oba 1, For though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. The nation being represented as the eagle in Jude, 28 is the nation of Edom who is the father of the pure blood Caucasians. It was out of Edom that both the Grecians and Romans descended, two nations whose national emblem was the eagle. America, whose emblem is also the eagle, is an extension of the Greco-Roman Empire. They were responsible for enslaving the children of Israel, primarily Judah. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand when our people were taken, with the exception of a few learned men, had long forgotten their original native tongue which was Hebrew, were totally separated from our Hebrew tongue. King James understood who he was and who his people were. He also knew who the enemies of his people were and with that in mind, he had our original sacred text translated into the language that would be given to us by our oppressors. This fact can and will be proven with the King James Epistle Dedicatory, which is contained in the front of most King James Version Bibles. Before we bring forth this information, we would first like to prove that King James had nothing to do with any mistranslation that may have happened with the B. Bible over time. This information can be found in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. When you go to the definition for Bible you will see that the definition is broken down into subdivisions. One of the subdivisions is King James Version. When you read this definition, it explains the following, in the course of time, slight alterations were made, especially in spelling, to conform. 
to changing usage, but these were all done piecemeal by private enterprise. The Zondervan Bible Dictionary admits that there have been slight changes to the Bible, yet these slight changes were not performed by King James but instead by private enterprise. A private enterprise is basically defined as a business or system controlled by private individuals for profit, instead of government or its agencies. We know that the biggest culprits behind private enterprise are the Jewish Zionist aka the Synagogue of Satan. They were behind adding the name Jehovah in the Bible when the Most High told Moses in Exodus 3.14 that his name is I Am. This is just one of the many examples of how they tampered with our book. Yet, they continually try to place this blame on King James. Without further ado, here is the epistle dedicatory of King James the by with the reason behind his translation of the Bible in 1611, to the Most High and Mighty Prince James, by the grace of God King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, Defender of the Faith, and C. P. The translators of the Bible wish grace, mercy. For whereas it was the expectation of many, who wished not well unto our son, this proves that King James knew exactly who and where he descended from. He understood that at this time that there were people who wished to enforce evil upon the people of Zion, Zion. Who are the people of Zion, PSA 149, to let Israel rejoice in him that made him, let the children of Zion be joyful in the king. James understood that he was of the seed of Israel especially when we beheld the government established in your highness, and your hopeful seat once again James is making a reference to the chosen people of the Most High by making mention of God's, hopeful seat. This again shows that King James knew that he was of the people of Israel. Then not to suffer this to fall to the ground, but rather to take it up, and to continue it in that state wherein the famous predecessor of your highness did leave it, this was the purpose for King James translating the Bible. E. In 1611, he states that it was done so that the sacred records of the children of Israel would not be suffered to fall to the ground. The Most High put it on James' spirit to make sure that the records of the Hebrew would continue in the same state in which they were found. James knew that this was important for the fact that he saw the eventual fall of his people with the resurgence of the Edomine powers in Europe. This time is known in modern history as the Renaissance period. Nay, to go forward with the confidence and resolution of a man in maintaining the truth, James ordered this translation to maintain the truth of the evil to come in the earth. Almost 400 years after his translation, you can still go into the Bible in order to seek the truth, while at the same time he expose the lies of mainstream religion and propagating it far and near, is that which hath so bound and firmly knit the hearts of all your majesty's loyal and religious people unto you, that your very name is precious among them, James understood how important it was to help maintain the truth of T. He most high and his name in the earth. That man of sin, son of perdition, sin, is Amalek, the father of our modern-day Jewish nation. James knew that it was this seed that would eventually overtake the power that our people established in Europe for over 1,000 years. It was the Jewish powers through the help of Oliver Cromwell that were behind the beheading of James' second son, King Charles I of England. No sooner as they took down our people in Europe, they began setting up their own kings over thrones in Europe under the same names, hence, modern-day Queen Elise. Abbot and Prince Charles, to make you believe that they were in power the whole time. For when your highness had once out of deep judgment apprehended how convenient it was, that out of the original sacred tongues, together with comparing of the labours, both in our own, and other foreign languages, of many worthy men who went before us, there should be one more exact translation of the Holy Scriptures into the English tongue, this is what separates the King James Version Bible from any other translation. The King James Version is translated directly from the original sacred tongues. 
that since things of this quality have ever been subject to the censures of ill-meaning and discontented persons, it may receive approbation and patronage from so learned and judicious a prince as your highness is, the same way that truth is censored in our modern-day media and learning institutions. The same was done during the time of King James to keep truth from getting to the people. So that if, on the one side, we shall be traduced by popish persons at home or abroad, who therefore will malign us, because we are poor instruments to make God's holy truth to be yet more and more known unto t. He people, whom they desire still to keep in ignorance and darkness, once again, James is showing exactly who his enemies are. This time he makes reference to, popish persons. What exactly does popish mean? Popish adjective, having to do with popery, characteristic of the Roman Catholic Church, a hostile term traduced means to be slandered or vilified. James understood that his zealousness for truth would cause his name to eventually be slandered and vilified by one of his biggest foes known as the Roman Cat. Holic Church. On the other side, we shall be maligned by self-conceited brethren, who run their own ways, and give liking unto nothing, but what is framed by themselves, and hammered on their anvil, James also understood that he could be betrayed by those of his own brethren who were only concerned with the well-being and were willing to sell him out for the right price. James was willing to promote the truth of the Most High and even through the attempts of censorship and false allegations against his character. Thanks for listening and subscribe. We hope this information helps to clear up a lot of misconceptions on a man known as King James VI and I, also known as Great Britain's King Solomon.